We're about to listen to Christian apologist Frank Turek and see what he has to say about hell. Here we go. Frank, what if there is no hell or was no hell? If there is no hell, then some of the greatest injustices in history will never be righted. You could look at the Holocaust, you could look at Hitler, Stalin, pedophiles, murderers who never get their just desserts. There is no justice if there is no hell. Okay, here's the thing. According to this man, and according to most Christians, hell is a place of eternal agony. The Bible even describes it as a dark place of gnashing of teeth. It's not a temporary place. It is an eternal place of infinite pain and misery. In my honest opinion, as bad and as vile as Hitler was, not even he deserves to suffer for all eternity. Eternity. I'd say he deserves to suffer for a thousand years, maybe even a few million years, but for eternity? Think about that, and think about it deeply. Does anyone in the history of mankind really deserve to burn in agonizing pain for billions and trillions of infinity amount of years? In fact, I learned of a man, I met him in South Dakota last year. Uh, a supposed friend of his was sexually molesting his daughter from the time she was age four to the time she was age 14. And the man came to one of my events and was so distraught over it. He was also distraught over the fact that his two sons, when they learned that their sister had been sexually molested for 10 years and they didn't know about it either. They actually left Christianity. They said, there is no God. If there is a good God, he would have never allowed this to happen to our sister. Well, if God is all good, and if God is all knowing, why would he allow such a terrible thing to happen? I mean, think about it. If God knows everything, that means he knew before he even created the world that this poor girl would be sexually abused. Yet, he made her and the man that abused her anyway. He could have at least intervened and stopped the man from doing it. But obviously, that didn't happen. And so I said to this man, I said, Steve, his name's Steve, I said, Steve, I don't know when the right time is, but when the right time happens, I want you to say this to your sons. Number one, if there is no God, what that man did to your sister isn't really wrong. It's just your opinion. Because if there is no standard beyond humanity we call goodness, and by definition, that's what God is, goodness, then you can't say what he did to your sister is really wrong. It's just a matter of opinion. I don't even know how to respond to this nonsense. Frank, let's just say, for the sake of argument, that evil, terrible, vile actions are, as you put it, just opinions. You do realize that some opinions are wrong, right? So even if you think these actions are excusable if there is no God, you can still call them wrong regardless of there being a God or not. And the fact that you need a God to tell you that it's wrong is dumbfounding and frightening. Secondly, the man is not in jail who did this. Why? Because every time the trial comes up, the young girl who was abused psychologically checks out. She can't testify against him. So he's still walking the streets and everybody knows he's a pedophile. And so I said to Steve, Steve, I want you to say this to your sons. If there is no God and there is no afterlife, then the man who did this to your daughter or your sister in terms of your sons, the man who did this to your sister will never get justice. Do you really think that's the way the universe is? Um, yes, that is exactly how the universe is. There are so many injustices in the world, which is exactly why I think it's important to be an atheist. What do I mean by that? Well, we atheists realize that there is no justice in the afterlife, since there more than likely is no afterlife. That means justice must be served in this life. We can't wait around for your imaginary superhero god to do something. 
thing. And again, think about this. As awful and as terrible as a sexual abuser is, they still don't deserve eternal suffering. Again, they deserve to suffer, yes, but for all eternity, that is beyond cruel. Yet, your loving God allows not only sexual predators to suffer for infinity, he also allows the same sexual predators, rapists and murderers, to go to heaven if they ask to be forgiven. I'll conclude with this scenario. Let's say a man rapes and murders a woman. The woman was not religious and didn't believe in your God. So according to you and your Bible, she is a heathen that will go to hell. Now let's say the man that raped and murdered her now dies. But before he dies, he asks to be forgiven and he gives his life to Jesus. When he dies, he actually goes to heaven. Yet his poor victim is left in the ashes of eternal suffering. Frank Turek, I reject your nonsense and your unfathomable and illogical sense of morality. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share. Thanks.